and you're like, Hey dude, you got to see this. <sighs> you got to, you got to see it. And I go, what, 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 what's going on? And you took me into your room and then you pulled down your, no, I just took it. Uh, <laughs> so- <laughs> Recorded live from studio 12 a in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. You're listening to the Josh and friends podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Josh and friends podcast. I am your host. My name is Josh. And this week, the show welcomes back Lee Olson to the program. And we'll be discussing a number of different topics, including some of the best and worst rock concerts that we've ever attended. Certain songs that remind us of an exact memory from the past. And we explore why some bands agree to do seductive photo shoots for their album covers. So let's get right into this and help me welcome back to the show. He is the only person that I've ever met who can listen to the same song on repeat over a hundred times in a row and never grow tired of it. He is my old buddy, Mr. Lee Olson. All right, Lee. The man, look at how, look how fucking handsome this guy is. Look at him. Damn. My eyebrow hairs are getting pretty long. Why don't you trim those suckers? Uh, I'm old. You're supposed to have long eyebrows when you're old. <laughs> like Andy Rooney? Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm going to have crazy eyebrows when I get older. I kind of miss Andy Rooney. He was, uh, he was, he was actually kind old of a journalist. Old crotchety man. And, yeah, uh, he was kind of a journalist, too, like an actual you know, dude that kind of cared about the truth. Yeah, he, well, yeah, he kind of, you know, I always talk about my favorite memory of Andy Rooney when he was talking about that Michael Jackson bad song that came out back in like 19 this is like when it came out and he's like what's the deal with lyrics these days and he's like he's like let me let me read this and he's like he pulls out the lyric sheet of bad he's like he's like this is the first line and he's like your butt is mine i'm gonna take the right and i'm like i'm like oh this is crazy this is fucking crazy shit right here and and he's like just he did a whole segment on like (laughs) <laughs> lyric i don't know if he just spent the whole time on the michael jackson thing and i'm like out of all the artists he picks he picks michael jackson he's just so crazy i think that wasn't two life crew around that same time 84 no two life crew was later right like 89 i don't know he was like maybe like eight, maybe the year after i don't know but if he if he read those lyrics i is probably his fucking well, I guess head thr- i guess part. thriller i was thinking thriller not bad because thriller was oh yeah 84. no yeah yeah bad yeah. was 87 okay yeah so late right, yeah yeah, so no, it, I don't know. the memory I, I had was I was just thinking about uh, Thriller. I bought the Thriller album at the Kmart in Kent, like wow. next to HG Hotspurs. That's yeah, I that came that out. Memory. That came out like November of eighty two or something. Like eighty two was it that early? Something. I just yeah. remember Like my Late mom 82. used to take us down there. I don't know what the fuck we were going to fucking Kmart for, <laughs> but in Kent. Oh, when nice. We Kmart in Kent. Yeah, it was right next to HG Hotspurs in Kent. Like, yes. Uh, and and it always smelled like popcorn because they had a popcorn machine in there. And right. And we'd always go there. I just remember the, the like the blue light shit and whatever. But they had their records right in front. And I remember going in there and the first record that is, it's not the first record I owned because when I was a kid, I got like the Muppet records and like the, I don't know, oh, the yeah. Wayne Jennings record with the Dukes of Hazard theme and shit like that. But <laughs> yeah. The first record I bought with my own money was Thriller at the Kmart in nice. Yeah. So that's like, that's a memory. I don't know. Music, music is cool that way. It connects, it connects uh, memories and shit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's, that's kind of like what we were going to maybe talk about is kind of like some of the music memories that we had and what a perfect beginning to that is, right? Like, uh, Lee's first, uh, album is the, uh, the thriller album. The one that he's like, you know what? That's the, uh, you know, I always kind of get mixed up on the albums that I've purchased because the, the, I I know that the first CD, the first tape, and the first album are clearly different albums. But like the first album that I ever bought, it was two different albums at the same time. You remember that record store on Main Street in Auburn? Oh uh, yeah, I can't, I can't, was it Hunters and Collectors? Was that the name of the? I don't remember. Something like that. Anyway, so I bought Men at Work, their second album, Cargo. Oh what? And then more of the Monkey. So like both of the, like. Their wow, second album. So, how dare you? How dare you? I mean, you? they're terrible compared to the first albums, right? I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying they're objectively <laughs> terrible compared to fucking Cardi B. I'm just saying. I don't know. I, I don't know. They were both huge. Well, I'm sorry. The Men at Work one, not as big as the first 
Men at Work album. The second Monkeys album, huge album. Huge, huge album. Okay. I'm All a right. believer. I, I, big, big song. I admit I don't really know songs that are on that one. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the first two Monkeys albums, they're like way, like they're by far their biggest selling albums. And then everything else is kind of like, eh, eh, moderate. Yeah, so... But, I will but, say my my sort of impression on the monkeys as they get older is that they were underrated. Like they got buried by their stupid TV show. Like they, yeah. they were actually they had chops musically and their music is actually really good. Well, the monkeys I just thought of them as a frivolous, yeah. stupid. Okay, so this is what if you've ever seen that documentary, The Wrecking Crew, they talk oh, yeah. about that because the monkeys are really no different than all those other groups. Like you know right. the Association or Sunny and Cher or like. The Wrecking Crew played on all the songs right. by all these groups. Everybody knew that the best musicians played on all the sessions, but we as the general public didn't know. The musicians were really the unsung heroes of all those hit records. The Wrecking Crew was the focal point of the music. They were the ones with all the spirit and all the know-how. The public was oblivious that there was this secret star maker machinery. I had no idea that people didn't play their own records until the Monkees came along. They were the stone-cold rock and roll professionals, and there may never be a group of that caliber again. They were just as good as any of those other groups. That yeah, were totally. having right. hits, but they got on but the they got kind of relegated because they had the stupid monkeys TV show that was just farcical and whatever. And I think they got relegated to being farcical, even though they were musically good. They were. The stat is that the monkeys sold more albums in nineteen seven. I'm sorry, nineteen sixty seven, than the Beatles and the Rolling Stones combined. Right. That's right. wild. That's, That's a wild nuts. stat. And, and they, des they deserve to be listened to, honestly, because they're not bad. They're yeah, no, pretty they're good, pretty good I mean, music. Most of those songs are their first two albums, and they're huge monster hits. Like, you, you still hear them yep. on the radio today. So, yep. yeah, no, I, I'm i not ashamed to uh, be a Monkees fan. I'm, I, am I a probably fan. am going to go revisit some Monkees, honestly, after this, <laughs> because, like, it, it, is, it is interesting how we revisit revisit music and like obviously the memories that are associated with it. But like, I, I think I've mentioned before, I hated Phil Collins forever. Yeah. I was like, this sucks. It's terrible. I'm completely the opposite. Now. I think Phil Collins is awesome. I think the fact that I doubled back and listened to it and I was like, okay, let me give this a shot. Totally different now. Well, I think a part of that is too, that Phil Collins back in the day, you couldn't turn on a TV or like MTV or anything without seeing Phil Collins. Like Phil Collins was it, everywhere. It if he was, was not annoying, putting an album, yes. if he wasn't putting an album out with Genesis, he's putting out a solo album, and you're like, okay, we have Genesis, we have Phil Collins burnout. Like yeah, you're and the he's lead on singer. Miami Vice, and he's a, yeah, it's just oh, <laughs> he's everywhere. Oh. He's everywhere. So like, and the also 80s, like, I think he owned it, it matters what era you like. I think the window for like the music you like when you're a kid and sort of the memories that are associated with that stuff is really small. So like, for I mean, we talk about this. Like my my sister is four years older than me. Her music is Motley Crue. Yeah. Right. Well, in 1991, the music changed to Nirvana, and guess what? I'm Soundgarden. Like, yeah. Four years difference. And the music is wildly different. But also the um, difference was, remember, your sister was old enough to go to concerts. So she yeah. was seeing like both of those kinds of styles of totally. groups like yes. in concert. Yep. Like she was seeing the little clubs yep. like at the bars with yep. like Alice in Chains and stuff like totally. that. Right. Yeah. And then she was like seeing the stadium tours with uh, Motley Crue. So she was yep. she almost kind of got like the maybe like the better of like the era. Oh, I agree. Because of the no, Seattle I mean, era, you know, that's the thing is, I think I think her era hit. Seattle perfectly because they were old enough to go to the shows when they were still playing the crocodile or whatever, like playing little tiny venues. Yeah. Uh, by the time we were old enough to actually go out, it was rock stock and fucking, you know, Lollapalooza. Yeah. Like it's still Soundgarden cool, but, playing. but yeah, we were definitely still by the awesome. time we, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Jewel, Jewel is four years older than me and like, she's in the picture of, of Eddie Vedder hanging off the, off the awning at, uh, show at Magnuson Park. That's you know, so like, cool. She's in there somewhere. I can, we've never been <laughs> her, but, That's so awesome. Uh, but like she could go to those shows. I was too young. You know, in 1991, I wouldn't have been really going to a show. I was, what was that 16? Yeah. So barely old enough. Like you might go to a show, but not quite as much as 18, 19, and obviously not at 21. 21, you start going to shows. Right. Like for the most drunk, part. Clubs, club shows. Yeah. I mean, like 
once in a great while you're like parents are like hey can you drop me off and like that's another thing it's like can you drop me off downtown right. seattle and then pick me right. up downtown seattle like at midnight yeah, or, I, I, yeah like, I think I think that just did yeah so mm-hmm. but yeah so I, I don't know we were just we were just kind of talking about some of the music that we were you know that brings up crazy memories like you know I'm sure your sister has drunken memories of seeing some of those bands uh totally. you know, in the, in concert in those like little clubs and everything and being able to say some of that too I bet she has some crazy stories about some of the concerts she's seen and and you know all that all that crazy stuff but but we have some stories of our own we always talk about the offspring show oh man <laughs> just yeah. because like and i always see it it's so funny because like i i'm on that that 90s like fan page on facebook and and everyone always bags on on offspring and i'm like i was always i'm always like man if they even knew because like that that concert was so hilarious but it's like yeah they're not they're not they're not like a great live band, but they, like, isn't that part of the charm well, of the, the, the whole what experience? What constitutes a great live band? Tight music that sounds like the album, well, or a fun time? Yeah, no, because that's what that's what uh, people used to say about the Eagles. They were perfect in concert, but people were like, "It's fucking boring." Like, boring, right? Mm. Who wants to? Who wants to? I can. I have the album at home. I can yeah. listen to that album. Why yeah. would I just go there and watch them? You know, do it perfectly as it sounds like on the record. Which is why you kind of you kind of got to mix it up a little bit, or right. interact with a crowd, uh, or, or something. Or get a right? fucking fire hose and shoot the fucking ceiling <laughs> tiles off the top of the like. That's what I want at a concert. I want fucking mayhem. I want I want uh, Woodstock '99 or whatever. I want fire. Oh god, I want shit that I can't see sitting I, in my living room. I'm not jealous of Woodstock '99. If me you've either, that's not like a fucking right? miserable thing. But but yeah. that last little bit with Limp Biscuit and just fucking blowing shit up and like uh, that looked fun. I don't know. <laughs> I, I did like how they, when they were talking about in that documentary, how they were like, yeah, uh, the, the, we can't explain it. There was just some sort of anger and in, in the music. And it was like, just so heavy. And everyone was just so, and I'm like, that's exactly what we were listening to. <laughs> we yeah. were at that right age. Like we're, I don't know why people were like into that because like you, right. you can go back now and and it's, you can get back into it, kind of like what you're saying. Like you're like, okay, I can revisit some of the songs and everything, and and I don't hate them, but it's like right. you don't love them like you did. Like you're like, no. oh fuck, man. Like, oh, like every time like you used to sing some of those songs in karaoke, man. Like, boy, oh, dude, you'd well, bring that I house mean, down. Well, like, but I think that's the thing is like certain points in your life. Like I think they identify with the moment in life that you're at. Uh, if if you're 25. 24, 25, 23, 24, 25 in 1999 or 2000 when Limp Biscuit was doing their shit. That's your fucking thing because you are generally, not everyone, generally pretty aggressive asshole at age 25. <laughs> that's true. That's like peak, like that's, testosterone, that's peak, right? Peak, peak asshole male <laughs> uh, is tw- 22 to 25. Yeah. Like, and, and then Limp Biscuit comes along and they just say, I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah, you know, like it, it's awesome. Yeah, and th- those are some great memories. Like just being that aggro. Yeah. Did you see that he is touring now with Corey Feldman? He's brought Corey Feldman to. <laughs> I'm, I'm not making this up. I'm not making it up, Lee. I thought you were going to finish. Like you said, Corey, and before you got to the last name, I was like Corey Taylor from. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, 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 not Corey Taylor. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, first the yeah, dude Corey, dresses Corey up Glover like a grandpa. Living color makes even more sense. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, the Corey Wells from Three Dog Night. Even that's more more than like, he Corey died. Feldman. He actually that Stephen sounds that still makes than... more sense than Corey Feldman. <laughs> Touring with a dead person makes more sense than Corey Feldman. Corey Hart, Corey, uh, who's the other Corey? Corey from the eighties with the uh, um oh uh Haim. Corey Haim. Corey Haim. that makes more eh. that I don't yeah. know that makes okay. equal amount of sense. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's a true story. So they, they, <laughs> yes. he, you you look up tour with Limp Bizkit, and it has with special guest Corey Feldman. I mean, this is weird. Yeah. So yeah, it's fucking weird. I don't know. Yeah. Well, okay. So like, but thinking about memory, like, I mean, I have memories of that era just being an asshole and whatever. Think about songs that like make you remember a thing. Because like you you mentioned. We were just talking about my sister and her ear and whatever. And, and it popped in my head that like when I was, it had to be 94. When did Everclear um, 
Santa Monica. I'm still living with your girls. Lonely and dreaming of the West Coast. 94, 95, something like that. So it must have been 94 because I was still living at home. uh, And I was playing that song on my stupid guitar over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Right? To this day, if my sister is, and she's in her 50s, I'm approaching 50, to this day, if she is somewhere and that song comes on, she'll call me. No she's way. Like, you, she's like, you motherfucker. That this is stupid funny. song. So from me just playing it in the living room in our house on my stupid electric guitar, it is ingrained in her. Like she used to call me, she was in a bowling league and she would call me. She's like, hey, uh, I need a song to like, you know, pump me up. And I was like, Haha, Everclear. Uh, Santa Monica. She's like, you motherfucker. (laughs) So like that song forever will be tied between me and my sister for that stupid, dumb memory. And it's just dumb. It's just me playing, but like, that's just like the Scott Awada story that, you know, it it totally is. I mean, that's what Scott Awada and I, I I don't know what, maybe we were just so drunk. We didn't want to get up and move, but like, we're just like, just laying there and we're like, I don't know why you guys didn't change it either. Cause I I went to bed and I was, we listened to it 400 times for (laughs) four easy 400 times. Lee, you were famous for when you liked a song, you'd put I still it on do. repeat. I still, put, I still do that, but and, but you guys didn't have like I went to sleep. You guys could have just went click. Yeah, we were just we were just laying there, and and then <laughs> the song would slowly end. It was like a song. It was the song was Mexico by Refreshment. The refreshment. <laughs> And then it would start back up, and then him and I would just start laughing, and I'm like, oh my god, what are we doing? What is this? <laughs> so, I mean, to fill in the gaps, like, we had gone out or whatever, and, and then we went back to my apartment, or, you know, that yeah, I shared. Yeah, we just crashing with... on the floor. It's yeah. like, you know, just college yeah, and... kids crashing on the floor. <laughs> and the stereo was in the living room, and I just was like, I'm going to put this on repeat. I want to go to sleep, listen to this song. And I just put it on, and then I went to my room. Yeah, you were in your room. immediately passed out. I went to my room and the music's playing in the living room and you guys are stuck out there. Like he's like, I don't know if he's like on the floor and I'm on the couch or vice versa or whatever, but like we're just sitting there and we're like, for whatever reason, we didn't, we didn't get up and change it. Like it could have taken two seconds to do like Skywata and I still talk about that to this day. We like literally, you know, and I haven't, I haven't hung out with Skywata in 20 years. (laughs) I bet if you sent Scott Awada a Facebook message that just said Mexico, he would know what it means. Just like when my sister calls uh, him and says Everclear. Absolutely he would. <laughs> and he would start laughing because it's ridiculous. It's See, ridiculous. That, that's what's so rad about – like it, it's a lot of things, music and whatever. But like there are moments. There are moments that we tie a certain thing to. I love this idea. I love this idea that that, that song, it's irrelevant what the refreshments do the rest of their lives. It's irrelevant right. what – Anybody, it, it doesn't matter what you do, what Scott does. It doesn't matter what happens in your lives. If you hear that song, you're back in that room. Oh, absolutely. Like, just like that. Just like that. Just kind, kind yep. of, it's almost, it's almost like when we were boarding the airplane with Vic and Ron. Oh, fuck. Who, we were already there for, what, three or four days getting drunk in Vegas? It, and, oh. and, and then this, they, they were not done. If this had been post 9-11, they would have been tased. It would have been awesome. Lee, this was 2002. Oh, fuck. This was 2002, because that's when that song came out. Why didn't they tase him? We were hoping they would. Remember, I was sitting right next to you. Oh, I fucking remember. Yeah. And you were like, so wait, maybe we should like explain what, what was going on. Like, yeah, so after after a bunch of time in Vegas, where obviously you go and you just get shit housed and whatever. Yeah, we're all exhausted. We're like, oh, thank God, now we can go and relax. These fucking on the dickheads, <laughs> Vic and Ryan. And I say that lovingly. I love both those guys, but they're <laughs> fucking gigantic assholes. And they get on the air. first of all. They're did they get drunk at the at yes. the airport? Yes, they were. They were getting ham. I mean, drunk. They were. And hammered. it's and it's morning. Like it's morning. It's no. It was not. That was not an evening flight home. That was morning. Because we checked out of the hotel. And we went right to the airport. Yeah. So it was like they, eleven. And they were. I don't know. So fucking drunk. So drunk. 
Yeah, they were retarded two, drunk. And those two feed off each other. Like, I, I don't know how else to – you have those friends. I don't know. You get a couple friends together, and they just feed off each other, and they're dickheads. Ryan and Vic feed off each other. Yeah. Not in a good way. Like, they they turn into super asshole. Mm-hmm. And they started fucking – they were making all this noise on the fucking plane or whatever. Like, I don't remember if they were singing that song before then. They may have like the day before or something like that. Maybe like I said, like, you know, uh, cause that, that pink song was, it was a big song when it came out. It was like a number right. one hit and it was like, right. I'm coming up. So you better get this party started. I'm coming up. Oh I'm coming. So, but, but anyway, that's irrelevant. The, 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 the point is, it had to be Ryan that started it because Vic doesn't know anything about right. you know, he doesn't, new music. He doesn't know who sings it. Yeah. So, so Ryan noticed that probably that we were like, hey, it's, it most likely it was you. They were like, hey, oh, I was shut the fuck super up. vocal. Shut Just, the fuck up. That's a stupid song. We're getting on an airplane. We're all hung over. <laughs> shut up. And, and they are not, they are like, they are like two in the morning, like loud. Yeah. Drunk. Peak right? drunk. They are peak drunk. Yeah. So they are like, both of them are, and they're both. Horrible singers. Yeah. Super loud, super yep. obnoxious, and super don't give grating. a shit about no. anybody else. And so we're on this plane and they are like nonstop just singing that. Ah, and, 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 uh, and, and I was like, oh, my God. And I, I, all I kept saying was, uh, Lee, I wish you were sitting next to him so you could do the commando thing where you go. Woof, and like, I, you're like, my yeah. friend is dead, tired. Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. He's you dead know. tired. And, Don't disturb him. I, I kept saying that, and you're like, I'm. He's like, I, I can I'm go. I'm about to choke him. I'm about I, to like punch him. <laughs> like put yeah, him to sleep I right think now. They were sitting ahead of us. Like I, I think they were sitting right, or maybe it was right behind us because I couldn't get to him. So either yeah, way, yeah, I think so. I think so... It, it, they were behind. I, I may have been like right, bef- like I in think, front of you. Yeah, and then you and were then like right in back. front of them, and yeah. so they were just basically yelling it in my ear. <laughs> and I couldn't do shit about it. And I, I just I, I kept standing up or like looking, kind of like looking over the uh, the the seat, going, "Oh my god!" And you just and, and you were. By the way, I was amused just because I was looking at you, and you were just like, Whew. and and the reason part of the reason is because it is right after nine eleven. <laughs> Right. So, I guess I forgot that because I thought for sure oh, yeah. if it was post nine eleven, they'd have gotten duct tape to the seat. But... <laughs> Uh, well, you could see part of the reason they probably didn't get duct taped is because you know it's Vegas. It's the Vegas. It's yeah, the Vegas so like flight. the Vegas flights have got to be just stupid, anyways. Right. But I, I do remember asking the flight attendant. She's like, "Meh, they'll pass out." And I was like, <laughs> "I think they did too, right?" They did. They did. Yeah. As soon as we got in the air, like Ryan, I mean, remember Ryan used to just fall asleep in the car. He'd be obnoxious, super loud, whatever. You start the car, yeah. Put the seatbelt on. He just go, die, boom, guy. just oh. immediately gone. Yeah. Just it, that was the running joke. Happened. That was the running joke yeah. with Ryan. Yeah, is plane taking off? They're singing plane in the air. Yeah, <sighs> Ryan's like a he's like a little child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as you get little little sort of you know vibration in yeah. the, from the motor, he's mm. right. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, man, that song. Yeah, that song will fucking stick with me as as a fucking terrible experience uh. yeah, forever. I'll never hear that song and not be annoyed. Yeah. No, there's there's a ton of these. Like, I mean, I mean, we could go on for days and days about this. Like, there's like a. Weren't you talking do you, about? Do you remember? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> when you were dating uh, Melissa uh, in the dorm room, like for whatever reason, this is so stupid. I don't even know why I thought to do this. She came over, whatever, and I was like, "Well, I'm gonna go or whatever." But I was like, "Before I go, let me put on some romantic fucking music for it you guys." Sounds just like Lee. It sounds just like Lee. And was it on, a romantic song? Was it a great? It like, was. A, I think it was. It was okay. Uh, honestly, it was a, a, a super underrated, amazing band. Robert Bradley's Blackwater Surprise. Fucking amazing. Everybody should look at them. They're, Isn't that the blind guy? That, it is. Yeah, it was a blind yeah. dude, like a busker that that he was busking outside of a studio. And the dudes like heard him busking and they looked out the window and he had a crowd around him. And they're like, holy shit. Like we got to get this guy in here, and they wow. fucking brought him in and recorded, it, and he ended up doing. I think he's dead now, but super awesome. And I but I put on for the night, which is like I, the lyrics are like, uh, 
for the night, baby, we're going to make love or whatever. Like it was super like cheesy, not quite, not quite Barry White, but yeah. you know, <laughs> and, the, and, and I thought that was a good idea. I'm like, here you guys go. I wonder Boop. if it works because I can't start. remember this. I can't remember this, but I mean, it was college and, and you have those pretty eyes. So it probably worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it was thank you. I, maybe I need that little push. Maybe I need that. Uh, you, Robert. I mean, I, I wonder if, I wonder if Melissa remembers that she probably, I don't know. I mean, she has, I think she's married with like four or five kids now. But that's the know. point I'm making is maybe that's stuck in her mind. Like maybe, <laughs> that, maybe if she ever heard that song again, it would take her right back there. You never she's know. She's like, oh gosh, college. <laughs> mm-hmm. You never know, man. Now, I don't know if this is, this doesn't really have anything to do with music, but I always have this burned into my head and we may have talked about it before, but, and I know, I don't know how comfortable you are talking about this, <laughs> but the, <laughs> when you're <laughs> when you this took sounded me... <laughs> good i don't know where, where, are we, where are we going with this i have no idea so you i came over to your place and this is when you're living with the first place you're living with or is it the first place you're living with josh dawson anyway well that would have been the apartment was that across the street from the teriyaki yes place? okay yeah that's so where you up... and scott were, were yes in the yes same yeah. place i was just reminiscing about i don't know what year this was 99 2000 i don't would have know been 99 99 okay. 2000 yeah <clears throat> So, and again, that the only reason I remember that is because God smacks, uh, I'm not the one that's so far away. That came out, and I was listening to that when I came to visit you. So, okay, sure. perfect example, perfect example. But yeah. anyway, that's how I remember everything, by the way. That's like when you're like, hey, what year did that come out? I'm like, I know. But, uh, anyway, but anyway, I went over to your house, and you're like, hey, dude, you got to see this. You got you to gotta see it. And I go, what? what, what, what's going on? And you took me into your room and then you pulled down your, no, I just took it. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> no. And then you opened up your closet and in your closet was this awesome coat. Oh man. Yeah. And it was the famous Tommy Hilfiger, puffy co- the puffy coat. puffy coat. And, and I'm like, I'm confused. <sighs> and you're like, yeah, you like this? And I go, why do you have this in your closet? <laughs> you know, it's weird because I like I'm comfortable talking about it, but I also I feel kind of bad. Like I, feel I know. Bad. I feel hey, bad. Listen, I just told my brother about a story just like this uh, the other day when I said that this is I don't know what year this was, but I was like, hey, I, 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 I told my I had mentioned it maybe in front of my parents one time that I wanted a like a leather jacket. Yep. And my. And my, I think it was my dad that picked it out. And he gave me like one of those, like, you know, bomber, like, like a jacket. bomber. Jacket. And I was like, right. ah, no, I wanted a biker jacket. It's not exactly what I was looking yeah. for, you know, like some NFL kind of bad. I was like, all right, like, and not, yeah. like you know, kind of, uh, yeah. not my well, stuff. That's, that's exactly what that was, was it was a super nice coat. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, was, definitely. But especially like, I'm no slave to fashion, but also at, when you're young, high school, college, like, what you wear kind of matters. Like you, I mean, you just don't want to stand. If anything, you don't want to stand out unless I you're, mean, unless, confident, you're which, unless you're, unless you're one of the backstreet boys or LFL. That, somebody who's super confident. Like if you're, if you're super confident, you can wear whatever you want and it, and it rocks. Yeah. If you aren't like <laughs> me in college, uh, not going to stand out. Just you're where you're some, more of the kind of like the, you know, the, the sweatshirt and t-shirt guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. It, so, so, but yeah, my dad did a really nice thing. He bought me a very nice coat, but it was a, how puffy was that thing? I mean, it, dude, I mean, it looked like talking. the kid, it looked like the kid from a Christmas story. The one who couldn't put his arms down. It was fantastic. It was. And, and I didn't know what to do with it. Cause like, you can't say I'm not going to wear this dad. And it was in Ellensburg. It was cold. It was a great winter coat. But right. like, how do you wear it places? And I don't know. No, I felt and so then terrible. I, 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 just, be- I begged you. To wear it out and you did because you're a lady but i was like and every i was like you know it's one of those times where it, listen you have made me laugh so hard that i'm crying so many times this is definitely one of them because the way that you would make your face when you would like when i don't know because you probably got like 400 comments on it that night and i'm like you get a lot of this comments is fantastic on the this is like a this is like one of my this is one of my favorite nights ever this is, like, this is it. This is like one of my favorite nights oh, ever. Man. 
of all time. But yeah, oh, no, it, it was it was just I don't know. I, yeah, you're right. I I feel it it, it is a weird talking about it because you're. He meant. I mean, well, look, my dad and, and I have a great relationship. He's he's a fantastic guy. We we get along. It's great. I I would never want him to think that I'm not grateful. But every once in a while, people miss the mark. He sure. missed the mark on that one. I was not willing to tell him you missed the mark. Please go return and do whatever. So we did what asshole people do, and we ridiculed it. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> I, it was good for some laughs, and it kept me warm. I guess. Oh God. Oh, that was so great. I don't know if that was the same night that you were dating that that one girl and her and I just, we didn't click, you know, like uh, we didn't see eye to eye on oh, a Oh, yeah, no, yeah. That might might have been the, was it a uh, flashcard night? Yeah, and uh, and every time, every time, well, the, the okay. So no, just those two up. nights would not have coincided because that I don't think was so not either. fun for anyone. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either because. Uh, that night was not fun for anyone. She was. Yeah. She was not happy. And, well, every and, I, it was one of those times where, like, every time I opened up my mouth, like, it would be there would be something wrong. Like, I I couldn't say anything right. So she would like just fucking like go off on me. And I'm like, listen, you she do that one more time, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop talking. Yeah. She goes, yeah, she was a strong personality. <laughs> very, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so I like anyway, a strong look. I like a strong personality. I'm, I know you I'm, do. Clearly, clearly, I know you do. I know she you was, do. She was strong even for my taste. <laughs> So, so I just anyway. I, I saw that you had a bunch of maybe they were yours or Josh's I'm not sure but I I took the uh, the stack of note cards or well because I think she had said something like why don't you just keep your mouth shut or something like she had just <laughs> she said something you're like okay so then you, and you don't you tell didn't... a person like me to do that because right. I'll do it I'll, right. I'll do it and and of course instead of being the you know chivalrous boyfriend and me saying hey everything's fine let's <laughs> let's be friends I was like let's see where this shit goes. <laughs> So I wrote out like every kind of like response that you can have on a note card on each one. And mm-hmm. then every time that, you know, there'd be a question or something, I would go through the cards and I'd be like, yes, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't think yeah, so. she did not. She did not enjoy that. No, <laughs> I did. I thought it was humorous, but I knew that I was going to pay a price for it. And I did, but eh, probably whatever. I don't fucking know. Needless to say that, that relationship did not last. It didn't last. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sorry. She had nice boobs. <laughs> I mean, she was a nice girl too. No, she wasn't nice. Nice isn't the word. I, you know what? I got along with her more when you weren't with her. Yeah. Well, it was weird when we were together. I don't know. We stumbled into it. Like sometimes you just stumble into th- things yeah. that you know you're not like I, it, it was one of the best breakups I ever had. Honestly, okay. like she and I, we drove to uh bumper shoot or, or at least it was Memorial State. I don't remember if it was bumper shoot. Exactly. We were watching like Ani DeFranco or some fucking super hippie, whatever thing. And we were up in the stands and like, it was a great weekend, honestly. And, and like at some point I just turned to her and I said, we don't have anything in common, do we? <laughs> and she goes, not really. And I was like, well, look, what are we doing? She goes, I don't know. And I was like, how about we just enjoy the rest of this weekend? And then we agree that we aren't cool. Together. Wow. Like we're, and that we're, was it. That was, and that was, and, and we spent the rest of the weekend. Like we spent the weekend in Seattle in a hotel. We had great relations. It was, it was super fun. And then we got back and we just went, it's clear that we are wildly different people. Yeah. And let's not date anymore. And wow. we didn't. And there wasn't really any animosity. I mean, maybe like a, a, a little bit of, I think she was a little bitter with me, but not really like it, you know. But we, we yeah. also didn't cross paths again because we didn't have anything in common. Right. Like we just didn't. I, I think she was friends with like Kevin's girlfriend at the yeah. time or so. That's how I knew her. But like, yeah. otherwise, we were not going to run into each other. We didn't have anything in common. Right. So. But it was one of the best, like, we were literally just on, like, a Friday night. We just, I literally said, we don't have anything in common, do we? She's like, no. I was like, well, why don't we just call this thing off, but let's enjoy a fun weekend first. And she's like, sounds good to me. So we did. Lee, do you still have that jacket? <laughs> no, I don't still have that Damn jacket. It. Yeah. Do you ever it's... wish you could, like, relive a, a night? And if so, which which night, which night which nights would you want to relive if you could do that? If, like, they were... You know, like like those kind of nights. Like, well, I can I can think of a couple for a couple reasons. One, I'd like to relive the Boone's far the Boone's <laughs> wine tool night. 
just to observe, just to like, I would like to watch that night again and see how the fuck we drank 15, 20, but how many bottles of booze? I don't understand it. It was all of it. We drank 20 bottles, like no bullshit. We drank maybe 20 did we bottles buy, of booze. Did, did they make like non-alcoholic booze or something? Or we, like- something happened and we bought those and we just weren't getting drunk at all. <laughs> And then the ice house kicked in, and but like the tool and the loud and the whatever. Yeah. And then James took me to the bar and I it was a, knocked some shit. Like it was a crazy night. It was a remember that that place that I that I had moved into with Paul. It was a perfect time to move into that place because it was like half empty because there was it was a brand new place. Yep. So nobody was there, and also the people that were there, they would everyone would go home for the weekend, including Paul. Yep. So. It was basically, Lee, you want to come over? We have a, yeah. an entire complex <laughs> yeah. that we could do whatever Open. we want, play as yep. loud music as what music we, as we want. Music as loud as we want. We could do whatever we want. Yep. It was yep. not, it was wild. Like, so mm-hmm. yeah, that was, that was so fun. Yeah. And the, the it was so lo- those speakers that Paul had were so oh, loud. <laughs> they were giant speakers. He had a great system and it would like just shake the entire place. And yeah. I was like, Wow. And we were just, yeah, we were just playing fucking tool. Just, bah, I was. And then you, you went in the back yeah. with, with the two ladies. What? <laughs> no, no. I mean, that's I accurate. Didn't do I, 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 I didn't do anything. But <laughs> uh, hey, no judgment here, man. I uh, like, I, I'm a little disappointed to hear you say that, honestly. Um, but whatever happens, I happens. wish I, 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 wish I had a story that was out like there. that. And I think that was the night that we went to like to Zilla or something for dinner. And I had a quesadilla that I apparently didn't chew because I puked it up in the sink later. Oh, God. And all the vegetables just looked like they were just freshly chopped. I don't know how I discovered that. I, I woke up and maybe I just to make in, sure that in Paul's bed and like I'd never slept in Paul's bed because like I tried to respect it. But for whatever reason, I went into his bedroom and fell for asleep For whatever reason, bed. you're hammered. You're well, right, but like, but like, I didn't fall asleep on the couch, which would have made as much sense. Hammered. That's true. That's true. But I, I just remember waking up and I just saw a bunch of like, you know, cut up vegetables, like whole, like sliced vegetables, yeah. like in the sink. In the sink. And it's because I just horked them up and 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 then the water rinsed off all the. Puke, My question so was: just... Do you chew your food or no? I no. <laughs> I eat like a pelican. I just, just pull it still to this day. I just eat like a fucking pelican. <laughs> oh God. Oh God! So, no, to, <laughs> you should ask Jewel that. Do I chew my food? No. You're a pelican. Oh God! Yeah, should, well, I remember my dad saying that to me one time at at dinner, probably when I was in college. He just turns to me and goes, "You know, some people chew their food." And I was like, "Sounds like a lot of work." Has anybody ever called you a pelican? Like as far as like a nickname? <laughs> no, or? that's that's, that's my a fantastic nickname. That's that's how I that's how I observe myself eating is just. Oh. It makes sense because. I, yeah, if I could, if you take like, you know, you know, when they come out with the platter of sizzling vegetables, right? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then they come out with the tortillas and they come out with the beans and the whatever. So you could build your own stuff. But the, the sizzling plate, that was what was in yes. the sink. Yeah. That yeah. It, was, it was like you puked up just vegetables, mixed vegetables yeah. into the sink. Yeah. And yeah, I think I made you clean that up. It, maybe did. I cleaned yeah, it up. You did. I, I mean, I think I think it was both you were pissed, and then I was like, yeah, I got to clean that up. <laughs> well, because it wasn't my bathroom. <laughs> no, right. Totally. And and the fact I slept in Paul's bed, I felt bad. Sorry, Paul. Um, I didn't puke in your bed. I didn't. Yeah. Like, I puked in the in the. Sorry, bathroom. Paul. Anyway. Paul. Can you imagine Paul, like, 24 years later going, what? You did what? Maybe he's like, thank you. <laughs> thank you for finally atoning for that sin. I don't know. Oh. But to answer your question, okay, so yeah. I kind of want to, I kind of want to relive that night just to observe it because I, th- it's a fucking crazy yeah, night, right? Um, but if you're asking which night I would like to relive entirely, uh, it was the one where uh, me and Riddle were being lame, twenty-one-year-olds uh, standing in the parking lot of the Red Apple Market in Sumner, Washington. Oh no! And. I think you know who pulled up, right? I was kind I of like could... leaning towards like, you know, great so, memories. <laughs> so, but this is the, but that you asked for what memory I would like okay, to Okay, okay. So this is a this is a great so regret. So relive or, or or fucking back to the future. It. Wait, you want to you want to relive I guess that's the, that memory, I guess that's the question. Or do you want to go back? Yeah, do you want to go back and change history? So the first one is I'd like to relive. I'd like to I, I'd like to relive that night watching what we did with Boone's Farm and Tool and and puking this like that sounds fun to watch. I would watch that. Yeah. I'd relive that one. Get your damn uh, hands off of her. Exactly. But if I get 
to Back to the Future it, if I get to Marty McFly this thing, I'm going back to that night. Okay. Because uh, there's a history. I, I we probably shouldn't say who, or maybe I don't fucking care. I don't, do you say who? Do you say? I mean, like, she looked like a blonde porn star back in the day. She looked like yeah, she was amazing, and she and I were friends from junior high. Like I used to drive her to school. Like, and she, I mean, in retrospect, I didn't know at the time. She asked me to fucking uh, homecoming. Like, she was like, hey, are you going to homecoming? And I was like, no, I'm not going to homecoming. She's like, well, uh, I mean, you know, maybe if you were thinking. And then I just inexplicably turned and walked away. But anyway. This is why we were such good friends back in the day. We were like, I got asked out by like, I got asked out by like a German foreign exchange students. Oh, right. (laughs) I know who you're talking about. She was hot. Yeah. And it, but like, but like, this was honestly. And we we had the both same reaction, by the way. We were like, what? No, why would we go to that? Like, who goes right. to dances? Well, I, like, what? Who goes to dances? Who, what? what? Fucking no, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> but legitimately, this this girl would would have been the hottest girl in in our high school. And look, I'm happy with how my life turned out. I'm not saying I want to go relive like Biff. You know, like uh, I need to change. I'm just saying if I had a light. Uh, so anyway, Riddle and I are standing in the parking lot, and this is after high school. We're 21 now. He, he and I are just standing in the parking lot, and guess who pulls up? Uh, and she's like, hey, what are you guys doing? It's like, mm, just hanging out, whatever. She's like, well, I'm headed to a party. Do you want to come? And I went, eh, I have to get up early. <laughs> <laughs> Again, sounds like sounds like something that you and I would both say. Like, and, legit. But I, didn't, but I didn't have to get up early. Right. And I would have right. loved to go to a party with her. <laughs> and she just, she looked at me, she's like, yes, are you... You have to get up early. And Are I was you... like, yeah, you know, she's confused and bewildered. She's like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, oh. I guess I'll see you later. And she pulls away and Riddle just looks at me and goes, what the <laughs> fuck? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know. You're so, kind of anyway. like. You know, those situations in the Wonder Years TV show where Kevin Arnold, like, gets in a situation like that. But Kevin Arnold actually dates, like, hot chicks in that show. Yeah, so. he dated Winnie. Yeah. 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 No, it was just, I mean, like, that one still stands out all these years later as, all I had to do is not say no. <laughs> like, I didn't even have to say yes. I could have just nodded and gotten in the car. So what were you getting up to do? Were you... Like, I did. I wasn't. There was nothing. I, I just it it made no sense in my brain that she could be asking me to do something, and so my brain was like, "Well, this doesn't make sense. No, I can't go. I must have to wake up in the morning." I got, there was I gotta, no, there was nothing standing in the way, and and that was it. That hair. was the last time, and, and that was after years of her trying to ask me out. She's uh, like, I "This is it. it. This is the last time." Said, not- I think she finally just went. This guy's a fucking retard. I can't. I I, I nope. So so anyway, yeah. Uh, I hope she's doing well. <laughs> are there any uh, are there any songs that remind you of her? Like any uh, like songs that come on the radio no, that you're like, no, you know what? Because I mean, I, like I do remember we were listening to um, Nine Love? Inch Nails. No, Nine Inch because I because I drove oh. a few. So like in high school, I lived. There were a group of us that lived up kind of out of the district. Like I didn't live in in the district. And there were a group of us kind of lived up on the other other side of Lake Tabs. And so I ended up driving a couple of them. I used to drive um, I, a couple of girls. I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah, this guy here. Right I know. Girls. Dude, oh, man. The, the, I, girls who will name remain unnamed. Not the same girl. But uh, do you remember? Well, you remember her? Mm-mm. Okay. Do you remember? Okay. No. So it doesn't matter. But. I used to drive them to school and they, they too were super like, as looking back, like high school girls are super flirty and slutty and whatever. And just, they, they, they aren't necessarily hitting on you. They're just being whatever. But like, I used to drive them to school all the time and they would hit on me and joke and whatever. And, and they were in the, and so they're like, well, if, if we can't sit up front with you and have fun, we'll just, we'll be in the backseat. They're like, great. So I drove them around like a fucking chauffeur, but they would be in the back fucking making out and like, to, and I'm driving wow. to school and I'm like, and as the you know the stiff fucking uh, <laughs> horribly, like, you, you you push the uh, the the button that has the uh, the divider go up, <laughs> right? Except except I'm the guy that would like nothing more than to just be back there, but I'm so stiff and incapable uh, at that at the I just, I just like afraid to even look in the mirror, you know? Like I don't want to be impolite. Yeah, 
So anyway, <laughs> I don't want to be impolite. <laughs> right. They're probably like, maybe I'll look back in here and then I he'll totally, pull over and that, join us. No, they, they were begging me to like do anything. And I just. <laughs> oh, God. Well, here we are at school. <laughs> See you they're at like, 330. <sighs> He's like, yeah. they're like another failed attempt. All right, yeah. let's go. So, so anyway, but, the, but that one girl, I, I would drive her to school to and from school every once in a while. Not very, not very regularly, but she and I went to junior high together because we were in the other district and like, dude, she was. A, a smoke show, uh, but also super cool, super cool chick. Like, uh, and yeah. So wow. if I had one night to, to relive, I think that'd be it. I okay. would say yes. It wouldn't to be go the night party. where you punched Ryan so hard. The no. Hit the back no, of his but, spine. Yeah. He did lay down under a car. That was humorous. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, there are some, there are some nights that I would go back and, undo or change. would you change that would you change not hitting ryan like that like i mean he lived so i guess not that's humorous <laughs> now but like you can kill people doing that like this that's how they killed alexi navalny they just punched him in the chest <sighs> so, are you serious yeah did that already yeah, come out a, like yeah that's a russian thing like i mean they it's the guards kill people that they put them outside to put their body under stress so they they can't you know their bodies are cold and can't function very well then they punch them really hard in the chest and they're and their fucking heart can't Jesus. It's it's the the Demar Hamlin thing. Like you can change yeah. the fucking rhythm. You can fuck it up and especially if you put the the body in stress first, you can kill somebody that way. So, Ryan, I'm glad I didn't kill you. <laughs> it was humorous. I have a question for you, Lee. <clears throat> Would you like I'm trying to think, you know, I'm always fascinated by these these album covers where they're like uh the they have a like a photographer come in and they're like, "You know what? I have an idea." How about you guys all take off your shirts? <laughs> right. We don't know if they're wearing pants, but they could have just stepped out of the shower. And they're like, stand really close. Uh, get closer. Get, clo- get close. How about you get in the back? <laughs> Put your hand on his shoulder. <laughs> like, what is what is going on with this? What, what is this here? Like, this photo of right. these guys. And that well, was, did- like, by the way, that was a pretty big album. That had like, a, I think that's the song. That's the one that had. Still the one on it, like yo, still the one, like that. You know what I mean? Like that had that, well, that dude, song, in it. dude. Photographers, first of all, like let's go back to photographers in general. Uh, why, for an entire generation of people, did did they say no? I need you to turn your head a little bit more. I need you to turn it and look at a look at look up. No, not like that. Turn it further that way. Make it super unnatural. <laughs> why? Why did they do that? Because all of our fucking pictures when we were kids yeah. were, were that. They weren't just like, hey, look at the camera and smile. They're like, okay, right. turn your head. No more. Now tilt it towards me so I can see just the top brow. Yeah. So photographers are also – like they don't get that shit right. But what that reminds me of is there was a – I think it was a Sports Illustrated cover in 1995 or six with uh, – the shortstops in major league baseball, the, the, you know, it's Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, I think like Ray Ordonez or somebody and Alex Gonzalez or somebody. So they, it wasn't, couldn't have been Ordonez or somebody else, but, uh, and so they put, they had a whole spread of these guys just hanging out with different shit with their shirts off. Oh like no. They're all posing. They're sitting. You got to look this thing up. It's, oh, no. it's Alex Rodriguez and Derek Jeter and two other dudes and they're they're totally shirtless with just their gold chains and it's so bad it's so bad and like you, you think back like, how much that, is it like, how much of that is the actual like photographer just wanting to see these guys with their shirts off uh, right i mean, I mean a lot probably. of photographers back in the day were you know maybe i think that's that's part of the job description is like hey we're not going to get paid a ton because whether but... you're a straight photographer or a gay photographer like the straight photographers look how much of the, how many of those like guys back in the day got asked from like those oh, right. supermodels and, you know, yeah. guys that were like on the beach with those girls. Cause it's just them on, they're on a beach with like 15 girls doing a photo shoot of like, you know, just supermodels and everything. Or like, right. you know, then you have like the, uh, you know, the gay guy. It's like, why well, don't we have you take off your shirts and, uh, let's see how this works. We'll, we'll do, listen, we'll, we'll do both with, with your shirts on and your shirts off. And, uh, you know, we'll probably yeah, pick and, the one and- with the, Shirts yeah. on, but and Ray, why don't why don't you put your put your hands over the shoulders of Alex <laughs> and Derek? It, it will look good. Like, Come I, in dude, a little I just, closer. I, just, I think it's the. I think you're right. I think it's 
artistic license, you know, like photographers want to do something artistic or whatever. But also I think the, whoever took this photo is like, well, I'm never going to get five major league baseball, 20 year old, you know, major league baseball players in my studio again. Let's get them shirtless. Right. Right. And I, I remember also like, I remember Stevie Nicks talking about, there was an interview with her and she was talking about the first album that she was ever on was an album called Buckingham Nicks. And it was Lindsay Buckingham and her when they were a duo in like 1973. Sure. And they had her basically, I don't know if she's naked, but she looks like it. They're both like, and she's like, I was not comfortable with that. Like, yeah. you know, she was just not cool with that. So she, she clearly never forgot that. And <clears throat> same goes with the, uh, Hall and Oates. They have that famous album cover where like they look, they, the, the dude dressed them up in like basically drag. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And they're like, look, we just thought this guy knew what he was doing, I guess. And we just went with right. it. We don't, whatever. And right. like our, our rep said that we needed to go and do what this guy does. Cause he was the it photographer of the time. <laughs> right. And meanwhile, the guy's like, look, look, if you just take, take your wieners out, it, it won't be in the photo, but it's going to, it's going to show that confidence is going to show. So just take your wieners out, stick them through the zippers. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, 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 John Oates is completely like freaking nude in the back, like just doing this <laughs> right. seductive pose. And you're like, Whoa. Right. Wow, yeah. this really happened? That's wild. I think a lot of this can be explained by cocaine for at least the music oh, portion sure. of it. Like just a lot of lot of cocaine. Absolutely. 70 like late 70s early 80s just the peak coke. Mid coke pre-aids. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Adam Carolla says. He nailed it. Mid coke pre-aids. That's true. Like, what what better time to be alive than mid coke pre-aids? That is so true. That is so true. But yep. if you could turn back time and you could go back to that concert that we went to with uh on my birthday on my 23rd birthday yeah at the college <laughs> uh-huh i i might have ditched out early so i can go out <laughs> <laughs> i would except dude that was so that that show was so fucking good they it were was so good, good. It, it was, was good. so good, and and it was it had all the drama. Cause, so like we're talking about the goodness show, but it was a college, it was a typical college show. Like nobody knew who goodness was, whatever. And they they drove over in a snowstorm, and I think the history was like the people at the radio station like told them they were going to get sued if they didn't come over or whatever. So they were all pissed off or whatever. And Kevin's band opened, and then like another band, I think like Nevada, Nevada Bachelors. Bachelor. Yep. And right. then and then the fucking house sound guy, the K. Well, because they what, what that the, guy the, the sound guy. The sound guy ruined the Nevada Bachelor's whole. It, he ruined the show. They sounded like shit. Yeah. Yes. So, so the, the goodness was like, we are not going on unless we could fix the fucking audio. Well, but and also we they, had the, audio they had their own. They have the, they had their own sound guy. Yep. So they were like, hey, we're not going on. And, on our own and sound this guy. guy was like battling, and and we were like, yeah, that last band sounded like shit. <laughs> Yeah. So fix it. And the, and the, there was a big standoff and I'm like, what yeah. are we really watching this? Like they're yelling at each other on the yeah. side of the stage, like on the right. And then, the, I'm sorry, and then the left. we all started to get in. Cause we're like, get the fuck. Do out. we need to like, get in I, there? And like, yeah, <laughs> like, like I remember all the, all the fans were like, get the fuck out, get the fuck, like get out, let them go. And I've then I've never seen anything like that. That was no, wild. Right? Yeah. The sound and the sound guy's just super bitter and whatever. And finally just folds his arms and goes fucking fine. You're fine. So they fine. fucking tune it up. Fine. Whatever. You know, he leaves, he, they fix it, and it sounds amazing. <laughs> and then and then they come out, and the first song they play is Anthem, and it blew the fucking doors off the place. I mean, like, Carrie's vocal, the whole just... Such an underrated band. Called? Nobody knows just, who we're even boom. talking about, but it was a, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was amazing. amazing. And, and, like, I get chills. Like, I, I mean, I get chills, like, thinking about this right now, because that, every once in a while, sort of like I think I was playing the Beach Boys thing that... Round, round, gator. Like, every once in a while, somebody gets it right where it just... Yeah fucking hits you that thing maybe it was the build-up maybe it was whatever but they came out there and they were pissed off the crowd was pissed off everybody would have been forgiven for just being like this sucks whatever and that song it's and her vocal just this is a call to and it just oh shit like it just it was like the old rca commercial where like it just folded his back like whoa yeah yeah, the old RCA video. Yeah, didn't you say she booked? Uh, you guys booked her at uh, uh, Fenders, we did, right? We did. Yeah. So, so that was something that, like I kind of regret. I was always a little bit in the back, but like Kevin obviously knew who they were. But like I was pushing 
to get them at that club for a long time because obviously we all liked them, but Brian Lane at the time was sort of in touch with them and because he had taken photographs for them for years, not okay. for them, but of them sort of around them, whatever he knew Carrie. And I was like, we got to get this band here. So I mentioned it to Kevin and, and Reed and they ended up getting that show built and they ended up recording that, that album, the live at live in Tacoma. And actually I was just looking through my shit. I got to get this frame for Kevin. I found the contract for that. I found the wow. contract for that show That's with, pretty goodness, cool. with his name. If it had my name on it, I'd be selfish and be like, I'm keeping it. Right. But it has had his and reads. And so I like, I got to frame it for him and give it to him. But um, yeah, yeah. Goodness is so good. And then we went to so me and Kevin and Lenny and, and uh, one of Kevin's friends went to, and Brian went to see goodness just the other day, you know, Oh shit. Really? Ago. Oh yeah, wow. Uh, How was, was that? that show? It is uh, at the crocodile. Uh, honestly, it was fucking terrible. Because they had, it was a CD release party for, or a, not a CD, a, an album release party. So they had, I don't know, 10 bands or something, eight bands. Excuse me. And so we kept waiting for them to go on. And it was all these bands, all these bands, all these bands. And by the time they got to Goodness, so it was Goodness and Sweetwater were sort of the, the head, mm-hmm. he, Sweetwater's headliner. Goodness was the second, head, you know, the second tier. They had time for four songs each. So it was 20, it was 20 minutes. They played 20 minutes, not even 20, 15. Oh, man. So we had waited all night to see goodness come out there. And Garth wasn't there. Fia wasn't there. It, it, I mean, it didn't suck. It was still cool. But like they played, they played four songs mm. and then they wow. and then Sweetwater came out and played four songs. Cause then it was too late. It was one in the morning. They had to shut it down and they played their, their famous song or whatever last but even they were pissed you could tell they were pissed they were like this sucks we can't do a show like we're gonna pick four songs what songs did uh um goodness goodness uh played anthem they played anthem okay lost um i'd have to look back i i mean i shouldn't all four because it's only five four songs but whatever whatever um, it's not really important but 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 we were just and, and it didn't it didn't sound real great because i mean carrie is an amazing singer but she's 30 years older now. Yeah. Like, I mean, so it's, it's not, she isn't as powerful. And then you take away Garth and it was a different guitar player filling in. And then Fia, the backing vocal isn't there. So they had somebody else singing backing vocals mm. that clearly didn't either know or cover it. So I don't know. It was, it, it was cool to see him, but it was a disappointment. Yeah. I wanted to see okay. fucking goodness play a show and they, they didn't, they played four songs. So, wow. It well. been lost. I'm happy they played lost because that's a really great song, but I was waiting for them to play, you know, like walk away and pretender and some of the other fucking awesome songs. So yep. right on. well, Lee, it's about that time, buddy. We, uh, we, we talked about some music. We talked about puffy coats. We talked about you punching Ryan in the chest again. Yeah. And we talked about you wishing you could go back in time and relive the past. Well, kind of, Yeah, not all of it. <laughs> Most of it. No. I don't want to go back to. But What's that something moment, that you you wish you couldn't go back and and? Uh, I, I mean, relive. you know, most most of high school, <laughs> most of college. All right, we're gonna most of most of my single life. <laughs> All right, we're gonna leave it there. We're we're gonna leave it there. That's gonna be a teaser <laughs> for the next time you come on. We're just going to talk about embarrassing shit that happened to me when I was yes. trying to get laid. Yeah, that sounds like a fun episode. <laughs> it sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. All right, Lee, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think I, I, I think you should uh, figure out how to get the ASCAP rights to play uh, the intro to Mexico for the oh. outro of this episode. Yeah, maybe I could maybe I could <laughs> squeeze on the live version and uh, <laughs> you know get that on there. But I don't we'll I don't see. think you're getting sued, especially because you're in Phoenix. Yeah, I think you're fine. <laughs> yeah, he owns Phoenix, man. He's a yeah, and he's, he's cool. One of the cool top dude. dogs here. Yeah. All right. Okay, Lee. Well, thanks again for coming on, buddy. Until next time. My name's Josh. That is Lee. You're looking at Lee right there. That's him. And as always, thank you for being a friend. Thank you. <laughs>